Thank you for joining me on this video. Welcome. Good to have you. Now, first of all, I'm going to start this video out with an apology to Michael McCarthy, who had an idea about a video that would include suggestions of orchids that are such good performers, you could consider them bang for your buck. Sometimes, I don't know if you can relate, but sometimes when you have such a big brain, <laughs> some filing cabinets are way down at the end of the corridor. And yes, that is where that comment must have landed because I completely forgot to do this video, for which I profoundly apologize, Michael. Let's get into what I consider in my collection orchids that are bang for your buck, but not only that, orchids that can bloom on a windowsill in your home without any fancy equipment, basically as a house plant. And to start off with, and in no particular order, this is not from preferred to less preferred. They are all in the same category. But to start off is Dendrobium hibiki. It is vigorous in its growth habit. It is a continuous grower. The blooms last at least three to six months. Repeat blooming on nodes that are still available on older canes. Their show is incredible as the orchid matures. Unfortunately, it is not fragrant, but those vibrant colors of pink and orange are just remarkable. And the longevity of the blooms, such a pleasure, a little dot and sparkle of light and color on any windowsill. It is also temperature tolerant from 12 degrees Celsius to the highs of 40 degrees Celsius. And it will also bloom in bright shade, even if it's grown on a windowsill. Another very, very great orchid I find that matches this bang for your buck category. It is an easy grower is Procatavola golden peacock. It is also vigorous in its growth habit. It is also a continuous grower. The blooms can last from four to five weeks and every new growth produces a spike. This one, unfortunately, is not fragrant either, but it is also temperature tolerant from 12 degrees Celsius up to 40 degrees Celsius and beyond as long as there's plenty of airflow. It will also bloom in bright shade, but if it is exposed to morning or late afternoon sun, there is a chance of higher bloom count. It's perfect for a windowsill because of its upright growth habit and compact rhizome. And the beautiful pop of orange star-shaped blooms that last quite some time, giving the next growth time to somewhat mature and then the next buds open during parts of the year. This is like a continuous bloomer. It's beautiful. Another one is Prostechia garciana alba. It is also very vigorous in its growth habit. It is a continuous grower as well. The blooms last four weeks each individual bloom, but because of its successive blooming, the whole bloom period can total to three months. This one is highly fragrant with an elegant talcum powder scent. It's temperature tolerant as well with ranges from 12 degrees Celsius to 40 and up degrees Celsius. Needs plenty of airflow because of how compact it is growing, but it will also produce blooms in bright shade. However, it needs sunlight to intensify the perfume of the blooms. Bear in mind, when I say vigorous grower on this one, that a small division of maybe four growths will grow to this size, which is now a 30 centimeter pot within three years. But it can still grow on a windowsill despite its vigor. Because of its tight rhizome, it will stay contained in a pot. Cannot do a list like this without Phalaenopsis complex hybrids, the ones you get at the big box stores, supermarkets or garden centers. I would not necessarily call these vigorous compared to the others I've just mentioned because they normally only grow two leaves per year, but they are continuous growers and depending on how large the leaves are can take up quite a lot of space. Now, the mini varieties are a little bit more finicky to grow and make happy. For that reason, I'm not including them in this list. I'm talking about the big ones. The bloom longevity is something else, though. 
five to six months easily and possibly even longer. Most of the large complex hybrids are not fragrant, they are not temperature tolerant, but can perform within a range of 16 degrees Celsius all the way up to 40 degrees Celsius with a lot of airflow once again, but they do need a temperature drop in their environment in order for them to spike and produce blooms. If you have a very, very warm space and eventually that space will cool down to about 10 or 15 degrees less than from what the majority of the high temperature is, that is a temperature drop. It doesn't have to drop to 16 degrees Celsius for these orchids to spike. A well-lit area on a windowsill, no direct sun will make these a great accent orchid in any home. Oh, and dendrobium berry odor. Super vigorous in its growth habit. It is also a continuous grower. Bloom show can last five weeks due to the abundance of blooms, whereas each individual bloom will last approximately 10 days. Beautifully fragrant with a honeysuckle heady fragrance, which intensifies when the blooms are exposed to sunlight. This orchid can take direct sun. It is a compact, upright grower and temperature tolerant from 5 degrees Celsius all the way up to 40 degrees Celsius. And the beauty of this orchid is that in each season, spikes will form on older canes, making for a great show year after year. Meaning that even though a cane had a spike the previous year, the following year, it'll produce another spike or two from that same cane, including the canes that have just matured. Can't have a list like this without Maxillaria variabilis. It is super vigorous in its growth habit. It grows new structures during spring and summer and blooms during the winter months. Each bloom lasts up to two weeks, but due to several blooms on each growth, blooming successively, the bloom show can last four months in total. Some Maxillaria variabilis are fragrant. It looks like a bit of a rambler, but due to its growth habit, it is not an orchid that is all over the place. It is pretty compact and maintains its shape. It just gets wider. Know that a small division can become large within four years. When I say small division, five to six growths. Four years later, you get something like this. It can take direct sun and is temperature tolerant from five degrees Celsius all the way up to the highs of four degrees Celsius. A south facing windowsill would be perfect, but take note, one day it's going to need its own stand. The least of any space hogs, if any of these are space hogs, I don't consider this list any that have space hogs on them because of their upright compact growing habit, but the least space consuming are tolumnias. They're small, they're cute space fillers that can grow hanging from the ceiling in a pot like little window ornaments. I have included them in this list of recommendations because they will bloom quickly even when bought as non-blooming size. Meanwhile, it is rare that tolumnias are sold as near blooming size because they mature so fast and they stay small and compact even as they grow and age. They need bright light, direct morning or afternoon light or continuous bright shade. There is so much variety in their bloom colors and combination and they will bloom for months because their spikes branch, allowing for continuous blooming over a period of three to four months. And they will spike on each new fan. They are not fragrant and not really temperature tolerant when it comes to low temperatures. They like what a Phalaenopsis would like, 16 degrees all the way up to 40 degrees Celsius. And then we have the Nobly hybrids, vigorous growers, fun to grow because they grow new growths fast and have beautiful spring green glossy leaves. They need a little support when their growths get longer just to save space and have a better bloom display. And when they bloom, it is quite the show. They also bloom on old canes where nodes are available. So with each year, blooms are more abundant and many hybrids are highly fragrant, mainly a sweet freesia fragrance, which gets enhanced when the sun shines on the blooms. The blooms will last five weeks and new growths are then already on the way. It's a great orchid for a sunny southern facing windowsill. They are temperature tolerant down to five degrees Celsius and all the way up to 40 degrees Celsius. They, however, like the fowls, need a drop in temperature to trigger blooms. It doesn't mean they have to go all the way down to five degrees Celsius, 
but the ambient temperature that they are normally accustomed to throughout the majority of the year, that temperature does need to drop in order for them to trigger their spikes. And the fun part about these hybrids is they also produce keikis, which can easily be propagated to make a whole new plant or bulk up the pot of the mother plant. And I have to add Latoria type dendrobium hybrids as well because they are vigorous growers and they grow in such a way that they are continuous growers. They produce spikes from nodes on older canes as well as new matured growth. So their spectacle and bloom show can get quite impressive even at a young age. Some hybrids are fragrant, leaning towards a fragrant of burnt honey in form of caramel, but it's not unpleasant and not overbearing. They will love a bright south-facing windowsill. They can take direct sun morning and afternoon or continuous really bright shade. Their blooms last anywhere from two to four months and their upright growth habit only needs to be considered on how much airspace they need. They stay well contained within the perimeter of their pot. They're temperature tolerant from 12 degrees Celsius all the way up to 40 degrees Celsius and awesome to look at because when they're not in bloom, they have such interesting pseudobulbs. These are the ones that I consider my bang for my buck in my collection. There are probably many, many other orchids that can come to mind outside of my collection and if you have any of these orchids in your collection please use the comments in order to add to this list these are the orchids i consider super easy and super rewarding and once again if you don't have all the kit and caboodle to grow orchids these are the orchids that you do not need to have any kit and caboodle to grow them well and enjoy them Thank you, Michael, very much for your comment. My apologies once again for the delay of this video. I really appreciate your patience and thank you to anyone that's watched this video. I hope it gave you some ideas. Orchid shopping season is going to start soon for some of us. Maybe some of these orchids I've mentioned today will be on your shopping list. I promise you, you will not regret adding any of these on the list to your collection even if you're just starting out. Have yourselves a beautiful, beautiful day. One condition is attached to that, that you stay safe. Take care, bye.